This week's Flipside column is written by Maria Slade, and she joins me now to talk through some of her ideas. Hi, Maria. Hi, Will. So this turmoil at the top of British government has you harking back to your days of your OE in, in London. Um, tell me what, what, you, what springs <laughs> to mind. Oh, well, it made me laugh because I, I, when I was doing my OE, you know, working for a small trade publication in London, the other journalists there uh, went through a period of uh, very much enjoying uh, laughing at my expense because New Zealand changed leaders three times in three months mm. at that point. This was uh, following David Longy's departure and Geoffrey Palmer had been made deputy PM, uh, but then the Labour Party decided that Mike Moore was really the man for the job to see them through to the election, and Mike Moore lasted 60 days, and, and then we got Jim Bolger. So, yes, it was like, um, who's the Prime Minister of New Zealand this morning, Maria? But, you know, we could well be asking the British this at the moment. Uh, we have yet another pri- Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Uh, by the time our readers are uh, listening to this or reading the column, he'll have gone and shaken hands with Prince Charles, uh, King Charles, <laughs> and, uh, you know, be patting Larry the Cat at Downing Street. And, you know, it's been pointed out that Larry the Cat's lasted through four British Prime Ministers, which, you know, let's hope uh, Richie Sunak shows a bit more staying power. Yeah, he might even still be a kid in that cat because uh, it hasn't <laughs> been too long, has it? So, I mean, what's your impression so far of whether Rishi can do it and what he needs to actually do? Well, he doesn't come without controversy. Um, you know, he was one of the ministers that was fined for attending Boris's, uh, you know, uh, party during COVID. So he has a criminal record, effectively. <laughs> um, his wife has been called out for being non-domiciled, as they say, uh, in the UK, which means that she doesn't need to pay tax on a great deal of the multi-million dollars worth of earnings she gets from her family's tech business in India. She comes from a very wealthy family, that they are both very wealthy. And, uh, you know, he, he was the one who resigned as Chancellor, triggering the sort of mayhem in the Conservative Party that led to Boris Johnson's ultimate downfall. So it's yet to be seen whether he's got the faith of his party, whether he can bring a bit of stability. And Lord knows we need it, because after the disastrous uh, trust uh, regime lasted 45 days. She caused complete carnage on international markets, as we know, and we are seeing the repercussions of that here in New Zealand. Anyone who's looked at their KiwiSaver balance can tell you that. Mm. So, uh, you know, stability is badly needed uh, at a time of, of a lot of chaos in the world generally. Yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, are we going to see a recession? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's the question everyone's asking. And I went to a seminar run by Waterstone Insolvency uh, in Auckland this week. And, of course, insolvency practitioners, it's all anyone wants to know. You know, are we seeing a recession? Are we going to see a great flood of business collapses? Which we haven't seen yet. I mean, it's been predicted all sort of throughout the the pandemic, but it never really happened. And there's lots of reasons for that, not not least the government um, stimulus that, uh, you know, held the economy up. Up quite a bit. But what's happening now is that the IRD, for one, are kind of losing patience with being the banker of last resort, as they often are. Uh, so the insolvency practitioners are saying expect to see a tougher stance from them in the run up to April, May tax time. And also, it, it, it's just so uncertain at the moment. We don't know where the economy is going to go. You know, it's not like the GFC where, you know, it was reasonably clear what their causes are. Now there are so many factors sort of ping-ponging all over the place. You know, the you, war in Ukraine, we've got incredible levels of ha- both household and national debt around the world, um, shifting geopolitical tensions between China and the US. There's just so many factors going on that the economists are saying they're they're chucking out the election notes for Econ 101 because the old business cycles just don't apply. Mm. So it's, it's kind of tough times for the average sort of small New Zealand business owner as to um, what's the best way to proceed. And the insolvency pr- practitioner's advice always is, look, seek advice early um, because if you're having to call your lawyer at 9.30 at night because your creditors are going to put you into liquidation tomorrow, it's too late. You know, there is a window of time um, in which, you know, things may be able to be solved. So, you know, that's probably good advice for both their business practice and their mental health mm. to, to seek advice early because, you know, tough times are coming. Yeah. Well, maybe Rishi might need to follow some of that advice too. Hopefully he's still <laughs> in the office by the next time we get a flip side column from you. Thanks very much for your time, this, uh, Maria. Thanks.